my kids were a little upset with me when they heard I was doing this today because they've made the mistake of turning the rabbits into pets. That one was smoky. <laughs> Ironic that I'm uh, smoking it right now. So this is my rabbit tractor here. It's a four by eight box essentially with a metal roof on top. And I use that fork stick there to, to uh, prop it open when I'm working in there. Four by eight box and I've got just kind of a, on, it's on skis here. You can see these down here. These are little runners that allows it to, uh, to be a little bit easier to pull across the ground. So all I've really got to do is grab this rope here and I can get my rabbits on fresh grass and clover and plantain and all the things that they like to forage on. Um, so it cuts down a little bit on the pellets here that I have to feed them. I always keep pellets in there for them, but, but they get a lot of, uh, uh, of extra food just based on the, the ground that they're on. And that's kind of the idea is to reduce, is to reduce the amount of pellets that I have to feed them. I give them lots of blackberries obviously just in the summertime when they're when they've got leaves on them but I give them lots of blackberries they really like that they will clean those those blackberry uh, briars off completely just down to the stick um, so I've got to um, select a couple that are gonna go today and definitely that uh, smoky one there is gonna be the first candidate to go they are ridiculously cute which makes it very hard to do the deed but you're gonna eat meat you're gonna need to be able to harvest it you need to be able to kill it you need to be able to butcher it yourself i just think that that's something that you should be willing to do if you're gonna be a meat eater so so without further ado let's get down to business so this cage here is kind of where we put the rabbits that have, are, are ready to have newborn bunnies right so we can separate them and put them in a small box here, a little laying box, and it keeps them protected. There's some little guys in there. There's about six or seven. I think there's, uh, I think there's six newborn little bunnies in there that just opened their eyes. And there's the mother lounging out. And this is the daddy Mac of everybody. He has the one that has, he's the one that fathered all of the baby bunnies that I have. I have started with two and now we have 22, I think. So we're going to thin the herd today. So my plan for this rabbit is to make rabbit jerky. And to do that, I'm basically building just a, a small rack here. Well, it's not really small, actually. I use this tripod for all kinds of stuff. I hang big kettles over top and cook over the fire, big chilies and things. But, but I'm going to drape thin slices of the meat over all these sticks here. And I'm just going to let the sun and the smoke and a little bit of warmth from a fire that I'm going to make underneath from this green wood here. This is all green cherry wood here. I'm going to let that smoke rise up and infuse the meat with a little bit of flavor. I'm gonna put a little salt on it probably, but let the uh, let the sun that comes this direction in the evening, it's gonna set over here. It's pretty intense in the afternoons this time of year. So I'm gonna let the sun do the work for me and this nice breeze that's happening today, I think it's perfect. But if I should need to, I can drape this big tarp around my teepee here, and drape it around this big teepee, this big tripod, and that will protect if, uh, if it should happen to rain or anything like that. Or if I just want to trap more smoke in there, we can do that as well. But I think just the way it is, is going to be fine. So I thought I'd come down to the creek to take care of the, the, uh, the skinning process and the gutting process. Just makes it easier to keep your hands clean and everything like that. And Maggie here is going to help. At least she thinks she's going to help. She's investigating, but this rock is a good spot. Um, when I skin a rabbit or any kind of small game, I typically just start with a, a cut, a single cut on the middle of their back. And then you can just kind of Peel them off like a wet sock. Best way to describe it. Small cut there on the back. A knife relatively clean. And then, just take your fingers you can turn the animal inside out and that also 
keeps any hair. Well, not all the hair. You're always going to get hair on there. But you can keep most of the hair off of the animal by turning it inside out like that. And then I just work my fingers in there on the inside. Turn it inside out. Like so. Work my thumb inside the leg. And then you can pull the leg down to that joint. I guess it'd be the knee, or actually be the ankle joint of the animal. Make a small incision, and that cuts the tendon. And once you've got the tendon severed, you can turn the joint backwards, and then just cut the rest of the tissue and the uh, and then you've got that, that leg all the way done. And then I'll just repeat the process, basically on all four sides, on all four limbs. Trying to keep most of the hair off. And then you can toss these into the woods if you live in a rural area like I do. I just toss these into the woods or on the creek bank and the possums and the raccoons and everything or stray dogs. Gather them up and eat them up. You can keep the hide. I'm not gonna keep this hide because I've got lots, but you can keep the hide and make all kinds of stuff out of it. Very good insulating value. Rabbits are really warm coats. Now Wolf, with his head. So I cut all the muscle tissue all the tendons and ligaments and whatnot around the neck. And then once you get down to the spine or to the, uh, to the vertebrae, you just kind of twist, kind of gruesome twist until it pops off. And then this can go to the critters. That will not be there tomorrow, guaranteed. Never, never is. Always gone overnight. Something gets it. Coyotes, possums, raccoons are probably the culprit. We also have mink in this creek, so that's kind of cool. I've seen, I've seen a mink a couple times. They're pretty elusive, and I think they're nocturnal for the most part, so they don't come out much. But um, I've got to get this tail fur off around the, around the tail off. So, cut here, you can pull the fur off the tail. I think that's what I usually actually do. Yeah, just like that. Pull it off. And then if you get a struggling piece here, or a stubborn piece, cut it off. And now I'm down to a skinned rabbit, and I just got to de-gut it, and that's all. And then to do that, all I do is I'll just make an incision right up here at the uh, the sternum, at the bottom of the sternum, sternum. Make a cut in there until I can get my finger inside. Like that. And then once I get my fingers inside the gut cavity, 
is just a matter of running my knife blade. I typically take my finger like this, with, so the point is um, is protected, and I'm not cutting all the guts and anything that I don't want getting on the meat to taint the meat. I just take my finger there to protect the point, and then I'll run it up, or down, I should say. Like that, and it just opens it up and doesn't cut into any of the guts. Now I'll probably save these organs for um, for my dog. She'll eat them. I can eat the heart and liver and things like that, but I just don't typically enjoy it, so I just don't don't. If I needed to and then was was starving, um, I definitely could do that. But times are good, and I'm not not too worried about it. There's no no sense in it. I can give it to the dog and cut down on uh, dog food costs. So we'll save some of those organs, the, the liver and the liver and the uh, and the heart, and uh, the dog will the dog will dig that. So I'll just toss that to the side. But the rest of this has got to go. Be careful of a bladder or anything like that. I think I already got the bladder out, but you gotta be careful, make sure you don't taint the meat with any of that. Cut away any parts that you're not gonna eat. That fat, since I'm making jerky, you don't want the fat, because the fat can go rancid and go bad, so I just want lean meat, which a rabbit is a pretty lean animal anyway. Um, so I'll just cut away all the fatty parts and just hang on to the, uh, onto the meat, the really lean parts, and we'll cut that into thin strips and, and drape it over our sticks. That's a kidney that Maggie likes. Maggie, you want another one? Lots of fat. That's where all the fat on the rabbits is, is inside the gut cavity. Almost none on the outside or in the muscles. Maggie likes the kidneys raw and the, and the rabbit fat. So I'll cut all this fat out, give that to Maggie. Because Maggie likes it. Come on, girl. some so it doesn't go to waste Is that good girl there you go Maggie and then there's a little bit of nastiness in here in the pelvic region, so what I'll do is I'll just take my knife and I'll, I'll split that, I'll pry it apart with my hands and split that and then get anything out, out of there that might be, uh, might be unwanted. Just a little bit of remnants of the intestines, or I guess that'd be the colon. Don't want any of that in there, no rabbit poop. Give that to Maggie. And now that we've got pretty much all that done, we'll just clean it off in the creek. You know, I've heard people say not to, not to get the meat wet, you know, not to rinse it. But I've never had any issues. I, I've done it with squirrels and rabbits and deer meat and all kinds of stuff, you know, when when uh, water's available. Clean it off, get some of the hair off of it, you know? Um, and any dirt and debris and stuff that you might have got on there, especially with the bigger animals like a deer where you've got to butcher it on the ground. And um, I've never had any problems with rinsing it. I don't know, maybe if you freeze it, it can have some issues and kind of give us some, some, uh, some freezer burn, but but for what I'm doing, I'm going to dry it out today. I think it's going to be just fine. So I've got the heart and the lungs in the upper portion of the chest cavity. Just pull those out. Heart and lungs. Maggie will want those. Maggie! Maggie loves the heart and lungs. 
Got that all done. And that's pretty much it. That is a butchered rabbit. A little bit of dirt on it from my rock here. But that's a butchered rabbit ready for the drying rack. Now you do. Now my absolute favorite part of the rabbit, rabbit is my, rabbit is probably my favorite kind of meat. I, I think it's the sweetest, most tenderest kind of meat. Tenderest, that's that's not a word, but most tender kind of meat. Uh, and my favorite part of the rabbit are these inner loins right here. This is the most tender, best part of the rabbit and probably any animal, deer and everything. That's, that's the best part to me is those inner loins right there. That's what I call them. I'm not sure what they are, but inside loins, that's the good stuff. So we could just take our knife. Actually, with a rabbit, you probably don't even need a knife. You could probably just pull, pull that piece of meat out. For the most part. And that, essentially right there, spread it out a bit, is ready for the drying rack. And that is going to be a very good piece. Just like so. Drying meat, to my knowledge, is, is the oldest method of preservation of meat. And there's no reason why we shouldn't still do it. It, it keeps it, you don't have to cook it. It is a form of cooking, I guess. Um, and it keeps forever, it keeps for a long time. And I just like jerky, you know, it's good for the trail. And good for just snacking. So now I've cut, cut the meat up into small, thin strips, as thin as I could get them. I'm just going to lay it across my rack here, drape it over as neatly as I can, hopefully without dropping it down to the fire ash pit. Don't want that. This rack isn't pretty, you know, I, I'm not into pretty. Obviously, you can tell by looking at me, but uh, but uh, I like things that function and things that work and simple, simple ways to get things done.
So I've got a small fire going and I've got all my meat stretched out across these sticks. I'm not trying to cook the meat with the heat. All I'm trying to do is get some smoke going. So once this fire dies down a little bit, I'm gonna add some more wood to it obviously, but once it dies down a little bit and I've got a good bed of coals, I'm going to add this green cut cherry wood here. And then that smoke is going to flow up into the meat and kind of infuse it with a little bit more flavor. At least that's the, uh, that's the goal. I'll put some salt on here. I'll sprinkle a little bit of salt. Actually, I'll do that right now. Take my salt shaker just for a little flavor. And also it helps to dehydrate it, dry it out. So I'll sprinkle some salt on there onto each piece pretty liberally. I like salty jerky anyway. So once I've got that all good and salted, I will um, keep working on my fire. And you can tell this meat is already starting to dry out and it's only been on there for maybe an hour, Pro probably not even an hour actually, 30, 45 minutes. And once I've got that good and dry where it's brittle and I can, I can break it, and then I know it's done and it'll keep for a long time. So I've got a decent bed of coals now and I just started laying in my, my green pieces of wood, my green logs from the cherry tree. Now on hindsight, what I should have done, because the wind is moving, moving primarily this direction, I should have moved my whole rig this way so the smoke would be hitting it a little bit more. But it's a little bit late for that. I mean, I guess I could still do it, but I risk dropping a lot of those in there because those aren't lashed in. These main rungs here, for lack of a better term, are, are lashed in, but these, um, but these pieces are just laid on top. And I could probably pull those off, but you know, I kind of risk making a mess of things. So I think I'm just gonna leave it as is and, uh, and run with it. I'll leave it burn like that. A nice small smoky fire for probably a half hour. And then I'll come check on it. If it needs to be stoked up a little bit, I'll do that. Um, but I'll just keep it going until that meat's nice and dry. The sun is just beaming down right now. I don't know if you could see any of that going on, but it is roasting, roasting me. So. Um, I don't think it's gonna have any problem drying out that meat in a, just a relatively short period of time. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it anyway. I'm gonna try to move it this way just a little bit because that's where the wind's blowing. I'm gonna try to do it as easy as I can and hopefully, hopefully I don't lose it all. Here we go. Now watch the wind change on me. It's the way it always goes, right? So I'm cutting this cherry wood up into small chunks so I can just add it gradually every half hour or so to keep the fire smoking, which is doing a good job of now. I'm leaving the leaves on. I'm just kind of putting those on there just because it adds a lot of extra smoke. I don't know if that'll do anything weird to the flavor. Some of you barbecue pit masters out there might, might know a little better than I do, but I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. And really what I'm trying to do is not doing this really for flavor. I'm doing it just to keep the flies off the meat while it's drying in the sunshine. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna, gonna leave the leaves on there and see what happens. My kids were a little upset with me when they heard I was doing this today because they've made the mistake of turning the rabbits into pets. That one was smoky. <laughs> Ironic that I'm uh, smoking it right now. But after I explained to them that they have 21 or so more rabbits, they got over it pretty quick. There were no tears shed. So I've been tending the fire for a few hours now, and I've been moving my tripod around as the wind changes just to adjust to get most of the smoke up into the meat. And it's just about done. There's quite a few pieces that are finished, like, you know, some of these really small, these really small thin pieces are pretty good and dry. It tears pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit longer, but 
doesn't taste amazing, but it's good and it'll last a long time. A little bit salty flavor. Probably could have put a little bit more salt and pepper, some spices on there would have been better, but, but it'll get the job done. Um, I'm gonna let it smoke for probably another hour before I take it off there. Um, and then we should be, should be good to go. Dried, smoky.